Yas, this is a good video. I, I like making this video. It's about um, uh, compassion in, in the truest sense. The truest, I, you can say, definition of compassion or have an empathy for somebody is when you enter into their world, so to speak, their consciousness. Somebody said once, you can't judge somebody and say, hey man, why, why are you doing that? Just stop doing that. Let's say they're smoking, whatever. And you say, uh, just stop doing that. But they somehow can't. And here's what, here's, here's what uh, this um, somebody said. I don't, I think Emmett Fox. He said, you cannot understand somebody truly unless you're experiencing what they're experiencing. You have the same feeling and emotion they have, the same mindset, the same level of consciousness, etc. If you have all that, then go ahead and give some advice. See, but because consciousness localized itself, we don't have that. We have our own little private world, and then we project onto somebody else uh, what we think they should do or not do based on what we do or not do or think we should do or not do. Some people, they can quit uh, nicotine or smoking like that or smoking weed. They just stop. Other people, they need to go to a rehab and then they relapse and maybe they spend their whole life, they can't stop. But they can stop coffee, for example. Whereas the person that could smoke, uh, could stop smoking, maybe they can't stop coffee their whole life. They try their whole life, they just can't do it. But the person that quit coffee, arrogantly, ignorantly, will make fun of the person, either in their mind or <clears throat> uh, express it. They'll say, They'll say, uh, you know, look, man, just just stop smoking. Like, what's the big deal? I used to do coffee every day, and I just I just stopped. Why can't you stop? And they don't realize they have their own vice, their own habit. Everybody has something. There's something that sticks. Consciousness does that. The ultimate, like, transcendence. We we keep something, you know. Nazar Gad, uh, Nazar Gadata, the girl sent me a. Uh, <laughs> she she she's like a dictionary. She she told me how to pronounce it. I even copied it and pasted it. I just didn't. Um, I haven't been studying it. See, I haven't done my homework, so I I, I still don't feel I can say his name right. Nazargadatta. I think that's better than my previous uh, pronunciations. Uh, look at him. He couldn't stop smoking. A girl asked him once, a student. She says, "Sir, you're obviously." You're there. But yet you seem you're attached to smoking. Why? He said, you seem you're attached to the idea of not smoking. Why? <laughs> Nazar Gadada flipped it, you know. He says, this belongs to the body-mind karma. He says, I stay as I am. I let this play out. Now, can the mind take that and use that as a justification and rationalization and, and you can just stay stuck in your habits? Yeah, that's the, that's the whole thing. That's the whole problem with <clears throat> duality. The mind can take and the ego can take all the spiritual jargon and use it for its own purpose. But it's not authentic. When Nazar Kadata said it, it was authentic. It's all about, are you authentic? Are you one with your words? You know? um, Muji also couldn't quit smoking. And he, he was already doing lectures and satsangs and traveling. It was his younger days. He was going to Italy. I think that's where the, the awakening happened. There's different forms and levels of awakening. It's not just one awakening and, ah, uh, you know, I don't have any more defects of character or short, I'm just awake. I don't exist, you know, all that stuff. Uh, awakening's for the body-mind. It's for the localized consciousness. So it can awaken in this department, but maybe be a little sleep there, and then it can awaken in that department, you know. It's a mess sometimes if we, uh, the mind takes the concept of awakening and just distorts the hell out of it, you know. That's why I kind of, uh, even though my titles, I talk about awakening, I also make fun of it to make balance, you see. So he was in Italy and he was leaving a satsang and he couldn't wait to sleep. He was going to roll up a cigarette. He liked rolling them. I can't roll worth, I just don't know how to do it. <clears throat> 
I remember when I used to smoke weed, you know. <laughs> if I was around people that didn't know how to roll, we weren't going to smoke because I just didn't know how to do it. But he liked doing it. And, um, and he had tried to quit before in the past, and he couldn't. Somebody could say then, what do you mean you can't? It's a waking being. He's, he's doing satsangs. He's qu yeah, because this is how it is sometimes, you know. You'll find out. But it hit him. It hit him at one. He was willing to quit, wanted to quit, but somehow the karma, it wasn't time to quit. It's like that. For the localized human construct, there's no perfect awakening. If there was, you'd disappear. You'd dematerialize. People that don't acknowledge that, they're talking from their ego, their mind. I don't exist anymore. I don't even know who I am. You know, all that stuff. It's like, God, man, how long is that going to keep going on? I think it's getting less, maybe. But I don't know. They still like to do their laughing yoga classes and then go make a video and, you know, I'm awake. Look at how good I'm, uh, how much I'm laughing. Yeah, you're a good laughing yoga student. That's how I see it. Unless it's authentic. Again, you can feel vibration if it's authentic. So he was leaving his satsang, going back to his little hut. And uh, he was excited about rolling. He was going to smoke something, you know. And then, but his back was killing him. He couldn't breathe. He's lying in the hammock. And it just hit. It's like, man, I got to stop. But it wasn't his mind saying that. Something, something, his whole being said, you're going to stop. Now, what happens when that happens? That's different than when the mind just says it. When your whole being is done, when that karma is finished, that tendency to stop, whatever, we're talking about smoking, but it can be any habit, it's backed with energy and power then you can stop. That's how you stop. That's why Osho always said, just be conscious of whatever habit you want to stop, be conscious. Be conscious. At some point, the shift will happen. And it's not that <clears throat> you don't make any effort. There's a play of effort also and, you know, all that. But I'm just saying, you can recognize the difference between just a thought that's just coming from your mind that's not really backed with any energy it can be backed with some emotion or feeling, but that's kind of superficial compared to when your whole being is backing it. Anyway, so you enter, you can do this. Anybody can do it. It's not a special city or power. You enter into somebody when you're talking to them and they can be present or not, even on the phone or something, but in present, it's even more powerful. When you're talking to them, there's no technique how to do this. Intuitively, you know how to do it. You just, because we're all consciousness. There's a seemingly separate form called you and a seemingly separate form called me. But take the mind and emotions and body away and there's just consciousness, right? So there's just consciousness. You can enter, this localized consciousness can enter into this localized consciousness. And you can start to feel. You know why they're saying what they're saying, why they're doing what they're doing. And see, this, this level of compassion, this is how you don't get resentful at people. It's like the movie. You see that there's two movies. Powder, that was really good. I like that movie. It's kind of an old movie. It's called Powder. Go watch it. And then uh, um, Peaceful Warrior, The Peaceful Warrior with Nick Nolte. And there was a scene in there when Nick Nolte was this uh, other guy, forgot his name, the actor. It was his guru, basically. And I don't remember uh, the exact uh, specifics, but Nick Nolte was sitting on a tree. The kid, the disciple, was walking by. Nick Nolte gave him a darshan. You see, that's another, that's another topic, though. This whole darshan, this whole transmission of, of you know, cosmic consciousness, you know, all these words. It's not that Nick Nolte chose to do that. You can't do that with everybody. You can't just blast anybody, right? The, the student has to be open and then God does it. God uses Nick Nolte as a vehicle to transmit and God uses the student as a means to receive. It's God doing everything. It's not this individual person that called the guru where then the students project on the, and, and so oh, my master can, he, just come see him. He can, he can, he can awaken you. It doesn't work like that. 
So anyway, it worked with this because uh, they were both uh, in tune with the, the universe and Nick Nolte gave him a, a blast. He didn't do it, God did. And um, this kid was able to see the motives of this of this other person or girl or guy, I don't remember. But this kid was having a kind of a, a rivalry with this other person because the other person was kind of... Uh, taunting them or bothering them or disrespecting him so when Nick Nolte the, this kid was able to see why this person was doing the so called wrong that they were doing to him he could see it he saw why he was doing it maybe there's some trauma in, in the family some situations had, had kind of uh, corrupted his mind and or her mind and, and, and they they um, they were out of balance and they were acting from this trauma. The kids saw all that, and so automatically had compassion. And then when they met again, um, he was seeing them in a whole new light. That's another thing. I'm going to talk about the powder example also. Let me I'll, I'll say that first. Just don't let me forget what I was going to say though. After that, I forgot. I think I do that on purpose, just so it's like fun, you know. It's like, oh, I forgot, and then I'll remember. Uh, I'm sure I'll remember, but right now in the moment, I'm playing like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to remember. Maybe I really won't remember. <laughs> Let's see. Damn it, I want to remember. Oh, I remember. I told you. All right. First, the movie Powder. This kid, this bully was taunting, it was torturing him, not, not physically, but just always abusing him, right? And then uh, the bully's dad also was a, was a bully, and they liked to hunt, and they killed this deer. And Powder was out there for some reason. <laughs> it's a cool name, Powder, because his skin was white. He was so electrified. This is how I see it. They didn't say this, but this is how I see it. His life force was so strong, he couldn't even grow any hair. He's just, he's just full on, just, you know. Never cope with samadhi. Can't can't last long in that state. Yeah, you know, I'm just playing. Um, well, I'm not. You can't. But um, so they kill this deer, and then he has compassion for everything. He's one with everything. He feels it. Like he he felt what the deer felt, and the hunters were like, "Yeah, alpha male, <laughs> take out the deer." And then Powder came over there. He took the bully, the son took his dad's hand, put it on the deer. And then the dad got to experience what the deer felt when he got shot and how it felt to die in the fear and the suffering. <laughs> dad wasn't the same after that. Stopped hunting. He told his, fr his friends, like, let's go hunting again. He said, no, nah, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm done. That kid, crazy kid, did something to me. I can't, I can't, I can't kill animals anymore. And then the bully also um, used, to tor used to just torment Powder all the time. And then Powder took his, he, I don't know, maybe, I don't know if he touched him or whatever, but he saw how the bully's dad used to torture him and just abuse him and everything. And he was saying it. As he was seeing it, he was telling him. Oh, he was, he was reenacting the father's voice, saying the exact same things the father would say to the, to the son and the kid was tripping out he was getting angry but at the same time he was like how does he know that he's like powder exposed you know it's like going to a therapy session and your therapist just exposes the hell out of you so look this happened and that happened you know you don't have to tell me your secrets I already know so powder was doing all that and then uh, the kid the kid got a transformation didn't bother him anymore you know didn't like him it didn't bother them because they're not conscious enough to actually digest and assimilate what happened they just got the experience the the you know they don't they didn't become spiritual after that they just um it was unconscious this shift of consciousness they had so they didn't recognize it so go see those two movies peaceful warrior and powder all right now this is what i was going to say i forgot no i didn't uh they had a they had a it's really powerful when you enter into someone's uh, state of consciousness. You can see it when you're doing it. Like they, they change. I did it just yesterday, so it's kind of still fresh with this girl I was talking to. 
They don't know you're doing it, but subconsciously something feels it, you know, and then they they can either, uh, this is the thing, duality. They'll, they'll either relax and actually feel more intimacy with you or they'll get a little insecure. They'll feel subconsciously like, like, are you inside me? <laughs> no, they don't think that, but something reacts. It's subconscious. Um, they did an experiment that that proves like this is this is this makes sense. It just backs up what I what I already saw. I didn't. I, I saw this stuff what I'm describing before I saw this scientific experiment. But then the scientific experiment happened and it made sense. It's like astrology and palm reading and stuff. A lot of time, I mean, it's cool. It works if they're really good, but and but it basically confirms what you kind of know intuitively anyway. But it's cool, you know. Why not? So they did this experiment. Um, what's it called? The next level of science, like you know, where they're studying energy and quantum something. Yeah, maybe quantum physics or something. <laughs> they were projecting these atoms on this board. And then uh, they could see the pattern of the atoms. And it would be the same pattern every time. Okay. Now, they did the same experiment. And they had somebody be unconscious. Just paying attention during this whole process of the atoms being projected. Just giving the atoms consciousness. Even though they couldn't see them. They <laughs> can't see the atom. But they were just aware. They held space somehow for the atoms. Changed the whole pattern on the board. So when you're conscious, it changes stuff. That's my point. And so when you're conscious of somebody, when you put yourself in their shoes, so to speak, you can help transform them even. But the point and the reason I made this video, it's, it's about compassion. You can Now, you may not see the <coughs> uh, specifics, like the movie, Hollywood, but in, you'll intuit. You can intuit these things, and it will give you a deeper level of compassion, which brings it your fusion with the source or God becomes the experience that becomes stronger. Why? Because unity. You're not in your little self, individual, projected mind anymore. You're you're more unified now, and so automatically, the level and experience of self-realization increases. See. These people that kill people, rape and murder, and just cold-blooded killers, they don't like there's no conscience. They can't do this. But you know what's going to happen? When they leave this body, they're going to have to do this. This is the definition of the so-called hell, but it's really it's a school. You flunked so many damn classes while you were here. Now you're going to go to the real school. This is like real boot camp. And you're going to be made to feel the suffering that these victims felt when you killed them just for fun. These people like to just kill people for fun. Some people, you know. <clears throat> so you can call, you know, these astral hells are there to really help you have compassion. And then when you come back in your next life, that tendency to do that, you, you, it's still going to be there because you didn't transcend it, but there's going to be more consciousness about it. Something's just going to feel like, I don't, think it's a good idea to follow this urge to kill people like I don't something don't feel right so you can't remember being in the hell not cognitively but there's some impression of that that helps you change but see this is the game of life if, if we everybody could just see and know all this already like like the <clears throat> the two movies I said like if everybody just had deep compassion for each other and could see where people are coming from all the time it's like it wouldn't there would be no evolution. And this is this is life. This is the game of evolution. We have to like learn the you know so called grow into this maturity and learn this stuff. But those watching this video, you must be ready, right? Because there's some law beyond algorithm, YouTube. We got universal algorithm. This attracts the people that are supposed to hear what you're supposed to hear. That's why if you're making videos, don't sweat it. and think, oh, I'm not getting views. You got to trust the universal algorithm. That controls the superficial algorithm. Remember that. All right, have a good day.